Hey y'all, CB here at MBS Welding. Uh, I got a little change of plans today. I was working on something else and uh, my buddy just brought this housing over. So let's check it out. This is a cast aluminum housing. Uh, got something to do with a, a winch system they were putting together. I hope this is something I can get fixed for them. It is a very contaminated thing and uh, that's the big problem you run into with aluminum is not only uh, is it a bitch when it's contaminated like this, it's been exposed to oil and grease and everything else, but when it's cast, it's extremely porous and th that contamination is going to be even worse. Um, I'm going to not only be fighting the, I can see rust where this must have been exposed to something that was steel or bolted to a piece of steel. There's rust. Uh, it's powder coated. I see that this black that's on the outside is not paint. It's powder coat. Um, plus the grease and filth. Uh, going to get to work on cleaning this up. I'll see about getting it positioned correctly and try to uh, weld her back together. So let's see how this goes. Normally on critical application aluminum, you would use a stainless steel uh, power brush and wire brush on a low RPM grinder. I'm starting out here with just a regular, really aggressive steel bead brush on a high speed grinder. And all I'm really trying to do is just strip this thing down. I want rid of all the filth, all the, the, the remaining paint or whatever is on here. You just got to get rid of it because a piece this size, if you don't get rid of all of it, you're going to start welding on it. It's going to be smoking and smoldering and just continue to make a mess. You're better off just to bite the bullet in the beginning and strip it down. I get it uh, lined up, clamped up, and in position. I put a tack on the outside, and then I start my actual welding by reaching on the inside, and I weld it up. Then I put the death wheel, and yes, this is a 5-inch saw blade on a low rpm grinder and i use that on aluminum gouging and it gets a lot of work done fast i wouldn't run it if i was more than a half hour away from the hospital because it is dangerous uh now the tool i'm using right now is a, a large tooth burr bit for aluminum and Normally, that's probably what you would use to remove all of the material. I use the death wheel because it's so much faster. I can get a bunch of that aluminum hogged out in a hurry and then go in with the burr bit and get the shape and bevel I want. And what I'm going for here, I want to cut this back and, 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 and bevel this back until I've hit that other weld I made on the inside. And on this part of it i'm i'm focusing on the pipe section of this uh we're going to do the flanges later but right now uh we're shaping this to weld up the pipe part now with the burr bit and the sanding pad i treat this stuff with beeswax and i say that over and over again on the channel because there is not a better trick in the world on your abrasives on aluminum uh Aluminum will gall up your abrasives if you use beeswax. It saves you so much and it works so well that you really need to use that trick if you do sanding, burr bit, and whatever on aluminum. Now, here in this TIG welding portion, I uh, got the TIG 200P cranked up pretty hot and I'm welding up the pipe part of this. And like I said, we're going to focus on the flange later. I uh, just wanted to get uh, all of the, the radius part of it TIG welded up. And, and then the next step is going to be dealing with the flange part. And I've, I mentioned this just because I think the order that you do it really does matter. And here I'm taking the, uh, the death wheel and I'm cutting into those flanges. And then I go back with the burr bit, a little bit of beeswax on a warm burr bit and i gouged that out and then uh what i've done here and the reason you can only see my head is uh i wanted to get a little better position and get that thing a little bit lower and i just grabbed a big c clamp one of my big bessie clamps and i clamped it on the channel leg of my table and then i sat this part on that clamp and clamped another clamp to the clamp 
And by doing it that way, I was able to use that clamp and the leg to get it at exactly the height that I wanted it. Now, you don't always get to do that. And you can see a lot of times I have to TIG weld standing up. But we got this baby welded up. And uh, I'll give you a look at the finished product. Hey y'all, CB here, the No BS Welder here at NBS Welding. I'm wanting to let y'all know uh, we got t-shirts for sales. Uh, if, if you'd like to support the NBS Welding YouTube channel, send Tina an email at nbswelding at aol.com. Uh, go to the NBS Welding YouTube channel. Check out the content. And in, the, uh, in all new video descriptions, there's links to our Amazon storefront and our affiliates. So you can check out uh, the products that I use and endorse.